Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERWplans.com. Today I'm going to show you how to use your planner when you don't have a lot going on in the 9 to 5. I see a lot of people asking in forums um, and on Facebook, how do you use a passion planner when you don't have a lot going on in the middle of your day? Uh, sometimes it's stay-at-home moms or housewives who they have a very routine life, especially if you have like little, little guys. Um, where you've got, you know, nap time where maybe you can get some stuff done, but mostly it's running around after a little one, so you don't really have a lot to put in your planner. Also, for people who are uh, retail wage slaves, you're going to go to your job, especially now during the holidays, for eight or ten hours, and you're pretty much just going to be constantly moving. You don't know when your lunch breaks are going to be or your 15-minute breaks are going to be, so there's no point in scheduling those, right? So block scheduling doesn't make a lot of sense necessarily. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can take your planner if you have a schedule like that where the majority of your day, five or six or sometimes seven retail holidays uh, during the week is very routine and you don't have to keep a lot track of a lot of stuff, how you can, you know, kind of use your passion planner despite that. Um, I've got a lot of different materials here, so I'll kind of go over those as I go. This is my huge sticker binder. And I'm going to start off actually not decorating it today, but we're going to go all the way to the back here. And I'm going to get out these stickers that I've been holding on to for a bit of time here. These are um, from uh, Chelsea Brown Design Store. This is the uh, coloring book sticker that she has that is designed to go over here in this block. But what I'm going to suggest today is that they also will fit in this time window here. So what you can do is grab a ruler and grab an X-Acto knife or a, uh, any kind of cutting tool. Scissors are great as well. Um, whatever works best for you. I'm going to grab a cutting mat here and I got my ruler. Move my planner ever so slightly. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out the time chunk that I'm going to be covering here. So let's say I work an eight hour day plus a half hour lunch break. So let's say an eight and a half hour day that I need to block out. If you're lucky, you'll get that um, if you're retail. Um, so we're going to line it up with our ruler. And generally speaking, the um, blocks here are usually, um, I think, four millimeters maybe. So you can, you know, do some quick math here, or you can just kind of measure it out. I'm just going to kind of quickly measure it out. And it's putting us at about almost 70. It's kind of closer to 68, I think, millimeters. So that looks right. We're doing eight. We'll do, we'll do eight and a half. That puts us around 74. So that aside, bring out our coloring book sticker, find the edge here because they kind of print a little bit beyond the edge. There's a bleed. There we go. And then we just measure that out like we did with the other, put that right to our edge. Make sure it's kind of straight. And I think we said it was about 74. So that's right about there. And I'm just going to drag to make a little cut in it. And then if you're going to use all like five of these, you could just cut it straight across. I'm going to show you a few different ways to do this. Um, as always, I recommend a T-square if you have one. We're just using the ruler today. So I've got to kind of eyeball the straightness of this. It's a little easier when it's a solid line or something. When it's a busy pattern, it can be a little difficult. All right. Okay. So let's say on Monday, I have to get some work done. I got my sticker. Let's say I'm working 8 to 4.30 here because we have a half hour lunch break. I can actually just completely cover the timeline and everything. So I know not to even think about putting anything else in that time frame. 
and then I can color that in. And if I really wanted to see the timeline for whatever reason, I can add my timeline sticker over top. I always recommend doing this part first, and then doing your timeline stickers or whatever on top. But now I've got my day blocked off, okay? So and then I could just keep going for the rest of the week, and I would have a full week of my day where I'm going to be at work blocked off. And it doesn't look like work. It's not like a big yellow text box or a big blue text box that just says work on it, right? So that's one thing that you can do. Also, from Chelsea's store, I'm going to show you a different tactic that you could do. Um, if you do actually have things that you need to get done maybe at home, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom with a bit of a side hustle, as happens. And so, yeah, you can't do anything while you're home by yourself, but as soon as your partner gets home, your partner can take over the mom duties and you're then free to do what you need to do. We have a solution for that. We have these stickers also from Chelsea's store. Um, these are the task list stickers that are meant to go down here in the space of infinite possibility. However, as you can see, you can also use them to stick right here, right like that, to cover up your week. Now, in this example that we're doing, we're working off of a week that has, uh, where we're working eight and a half hours a day, or we're by ourselves at home for eight and a half hours a day. But we know what our uh, time is, right? We know we need about, what did I say, like 74 millimeters of time. So I can actually just put this on my cutting mat. Measure out my length of time here. And then, again, mark it. That puts me that puts me right in the middle of a checkbox. I don't really want to be in the middle of a checkbox, so I'm just going to move it up a little. Remove the sticker from the cutting mat. Back to our planner, and I'm going to place our sticker in the next spot. There. So now when your spouse or whomever gets home, you have this list of things that you can get done once they're home and they're helping you with your kids. Or if you are a retail wage slave, um, or a call center worker or whatever, you can have this as a list of tasks to do when you get home, okay? And you can just go boop, boop, boop across for your day. Uh, another suggestion that I have, and this will be the last one that's using Chelsea stickers, because maybe not everybody wants to have their pl planner all stickered up, is the daily reflections. Once again, it's a sticker. It's designed to actually go in here. The sticker, however, takes up about, what is this, about 10 and a half hours worth of your day. And maybe you don't want like 10 and a half hours of your day covered up with a sticker. You only need the eight or so as we went over. So something that I did last year that worked out really well for me is once again, cutting them. And I believe, and I'm gonna measure it out just to make sure I'm not mistaken because I haven't done this in a while. But I believe that it works out to be you lose like your today's key lessons or something like that. Like one of the little stickers comes up, you lose at the bottom. So yeah, so we can keep our gratitude. Yeah, and we're just gonna lose our today's key lessons. So we'll just go in here, line this up. Once again, if you don't have an X-Acto knife, you can use scissors. You can use your slice tool. It's just going to take you a little longer to cut through the sticker paper here. Move this guy back. And then you could just have an entire week. And every day come home, you fill out this. Now, here's the interesting thing. You can also then take your key lesson. You can either put it down at the bottom if you want to have it like a day in review type thing. Um, if you do a cover like in Washi for the space of infinite possibility, you can put it down here. Okay. Uh, you can also use it in the today's focus section, which is where I usually want to use mine. And 
and we'll just line it right up here. I'm not doing it anything at 6 a.m. So there we go. So that's another way that you can use those stickers. Now, maybe you're like, well, I don't want to spend a ton of money on stickers. Um, a more affordable sticker option for you might be the Happy Planner stickers because you get, what's it say, like 1500 for 10 bucks on these things if you catch them on sale. Um, so one of the things that you can do if this is more your speed is you can come in here, grab one of these stickers from the side here, and you can just use that to block off your time. Right. And the Happy Planner stickers, and just like the Erin Condren stickers, the Happy Planner stickers will mostly work for this. Um, they're going to overlap a little bit with your timeline, just like the coloring stickers did, which is why we're going to put our timeline on afterward. These, however, are about what, two hours short or so. Uh, however, you can easily, you know, do something at the top. I think Chelsea has stickers specifically for work that say, you know, work and then have like a nine to five or eight to four or whatever space at the top. But you can also just go in and just do your calligraphy here. So we'll do work. All right. Nothing terribly fancy. Just going to kind of block that space off. And then we can put in there, we're working today from 8A to 430B. All right, there we are. And then you could just have that across. And that also, using these little stickers, because they're only about seven hours worth, gives you a little bit more flexibility if you're not working a nine to five. Okay. Because I know sometimes with like retail schedules especially, it gets a little all over the place and this gets a lot more scattered. Um, one last thing you can do is you can get very creative and just kind of color, draw, whatever you need to do in here. Um, you can, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go, okay, from 8 to 4.30, I'm just going to color this nice and solid, you know, solid color blocking that we like to do. And you could just do it straight across. Not the neatest, but that's okay, because we're going to grab a second color. We're just getting a little creative here. Just going to go in here, add a bit more color, let's add some purpley color to it. Or maybe some green, I like some blue-green maybe in here. All right. And then we can come in with water or whatever to kind of blend that all in. Or since these are Tombos, I do have the blending markers. Just take your blending marker, just kind of smush everything around a bit. Let's see, I think it's a little smushy. Don't overwork your paper. That's one of the things I do way much, too much. As soon as it starts to kind of pill a little bit, you've overworked it, you want to just kind of back away. Use a lighter hand on it. Because now you're just pulling up actual bits of the tree fiber from the paper. Okay. Um, I just grab a slightly damp brush here so I don't pill it anymore. Uh, the lovely thing about the Tombos is that they are water-based, so a little bit of water will just help you blend, like so, kind of like we did in the watercolor video with the Tombos. Right. I'm going to let that dry for a second. While I'm doing that, I'll also show you that you can al always mask things off with washi. I 
also. So once again, if you don't have the money for stickers or the time to deal with stickers, you can always grab, you know, some rolls of washi from whatever craft store you like. I was really bummed to hear that out on the East Coast, AC Moore is going out of business. That made me very, very sad. I love AC Moore. So if you're out there, go stock up all you can. A couple ways you can do this. You can just, especially if you're doing like an entire week that you have time that you have to work, like if you have a four hour shift or something, you can just wash you across your entire week for that shift. You can do washi across the top here or across the space going down, which is what I'm going to show you here. You can also, if you're, if you still want to time block, even though you don't necessarily need to, cause you don't have a lot of things going on, you can still time block using the, um, method that most people do for time blocking. So you can do that too. For this today, what I'm going to just show you is you go in here, oop, grab our giant ruler here. And I don't have to be particularly neat because we'll timeline it later. Okay. And then I might, I would just keep doing that all the way down. And this method, at least, you can also block out your lunch break. So if you're like getting an hour lunch or a half hour lunch or whatever the boss man's giving you for lunch, you can kind of time block that, which is nice. Um, this has a pattern, so I'm going to line it up. But if you were using a washi that didn't have a pattern, you could just kind of go, just keep going straight down with it. So if that makes sense to you. But, you know, it's your creativity. If you wanted to do like a time block that was a whole bunch of different types of washi, all the way down, that would work too. It's, it's your planner. You do you, right? This is my slice tool here because I don't want to use a exacto knife in my planner ever. Like, that's just a bad life choice. Don't do that. Okay. So we're on a little bit of an angle here. It's interesting that that's happened. All right, all right. Oh well. So we'll just keep going down here. Okay. Got to the point here where we've reached our, the end of our day. I can take my washi and either trim it when I get to here, or I can just line it up here and then just have it like overlap with the old stuff a little bit. So I'll add a little bit of bulk to my planner. Just FYI. And you'll have that bit of overlap there. If that's gonna bother you, cause that would totally bother me. Then what you can do is, as I said, just move it down. Like you've been doing, keep going down. And then we'll just do a lot more trimming on this piece than we did on the other ones. So this piece isn't straight. Let's make it straight. Now back to our like coloring mess over here. This, in case you're like, why did you just color in some random black and leave it? We're waiting for that to dry. 
So I got these stickers, just they, they were a gift. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my little sharks here. Cause I love sharks, just so you know. Sharks are my favorite things ever. And I'm just gonna go ahead and decorate my planner. And you may or may not, if you're gonna go this route, wanna put your timelines in first before you go ahead and do your decorating. But in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in my little guys. A little clownfish here. He's gonna hang out in the little green mess I made down at the bottom. Like so. His tail got a little wonky. And then I can even go ahead and put in like some little bubbles with my white pen if I wanted to. My white pen will cooperate. There we go. This white pen is old. I need to probably replace it. Blub. Blub. Cool. So. Right? Um, if you do zentangles, much like this one, you could just go ahead and zentangle it. Um, if you have a, like a really cool paper that you like, you could get crafty and put paper in here. Uh, however you want to do it just you know fill out your work days or your days that you have time that you need to you know not do anything uh, if you're retroactively doing it this is a fun thing to do um, if you spent your entire day playing video games which is something I may or may not have, not, not have done in the past just so that there's something in your planner right so that when you go and you do like your annual flip through you can see oh yeah no I was totally busy this week I totally did stuff on all those days but then you still have the spaces down here so that if you have errands to run, a uh, grocery list is something you can put in here. You know, you still have functionality to the planner. So like, you know, I can pick up like a shopping list here. All right, so milk. Etc. And then if you're doing the more deco style, then you could always just change that shopping list and put that down here. Um, if you're using like the um, holiday kit that I did, you have room now down here for like the sales that you're gonna be doing um, or to do your order tracker or whatever. So those are six ideas for what you can do in your passion planner if you don't have a lot of tasks or a lot of block scheduling to deal with. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you like what you see, please make sure to like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, as always, you can find me on Instagram at erw underscore plans, on Etsy, erwplans.etsy.com, and my website's erwplans.com. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next week.